present moment is not automatically a wonderful moment. You have to make it that way. This is a lesson we often don't want to hear. We often come to meditation hoping to just have a chance to rest, put down our burdens, and not be expected to try to accomplish anything or have to do anything, because the world is full of the push to accomplish, the push to do. We'd like to get away from that pressure. And sometimes we think, wouldn't it be nice if we could find a place where we're just told that there's really nothing to accomplish, all you have to do is just sit here and everything's going to be perfectly fine. We may want to hear that, but that's not necessarily the best thing for us to hear. Fortunately, you can find rest, you can find ease in the present moment, but it requires a skill, and that's one of the skills we're working on. On the physical side, it means learning how to breathe in a way that feels good for the body. The mental side is a lot more difficult, but that having that task of focusing on the breath is one way to anchor the mind in the present moment and to give yourself a standard. As long as you're with the breath, you're in the present. If you're not with the breath, there's the possibility you could be away someplace in the past or the future, but the breath is right here, right now, for sure. And then if you notice anything pulling you away from the breath, you know you've got a problem, something to deal with, something to let go of. And so while you're here meditating, any, any thought that pulls you away from the breath, you have every right to let go of. No matter what the responsibility is, having to mull over things you did or said today that you regret, or worrying about things you're going to have to do or say tomorrow when you leave here, or tonight when you leave here, those don't have any claim on your attention right now. They can't demand their right to be heard right now, because you've got your rights too, your right to Allow the mind just to put those things aside for the time being. Let them down. Let them go. And if they say you're irresponsible, we say, let's be irresponsible for an hour. But it's really not the case. You've got a different set of responsibilities right here, and that's giving the mind a good place so it can rest and gain a sense of healing, gain a sense of respite. so it can recover from its self-inflicted wounds and the wounds inflicted from outside. All it has to do is be with the breath, get on good terms with the breath. This is one of the secrets of making the present moment a really nice moment. realizing that as long as you've got this body here, and it has all kinds of potentials. It could be a potential for great pain, or it could be a potential, potential for great pleasure. And fortunately, the pleasure here doesn't require all that much. It just means requires that you pay careful attention to the breathing. Adjust it slightly here. Think about it. What would longer breathing feel like? Does that feel good? Well, if it does, stick with it. If it doesn't, you can change. You don't have to commit yourself to any kind of breathing that you don't want to. In other words, you want to learn how to make use of the potentials that you've got here, and use them in a skillful way. You can breathe in a way that can create headaches and stomach aches and create all kinds of problems in the body, and many of us do, because we're not paying attention. But now you have time to pay attention, and to settle in with whatever breathing catches your fancy, whatever feels good right now.
Now that's not the end of the path, but it's, it's part of the path, learning how to find a sense of ease in the present moment, and getting more and more a sense that this is your center of gravity. All too often our thoughts are focused way out ahead in the future. And when your center of gravity is away from where you are right now, that causes problems. You're leaning, leaning, leaning ahead. That's a difficult posture to maintain without a lot of stress and strain. But when your center of gravity is right here in the present moment, it's a lot easier to maintain with a better sense of balance. And you need that balance because there's some very delicate work that needs to be done here in the present moment. It's interesting that one of the passages of the Pali Canon where the Buddha places the greatest emphasis on being in the present and not chasing after the past or worrying about the future is one that he talks about doing what you have to do right now. There's work to be done. You can't put it off to tomorrow. And the doing here refers to the fact that there are potentials for all kinds of suffering here in the present moment. And the mind has lots of potentials for causing that suffering, bringing it up and creating it out of, out of those potentials. And it doesn't have to, and yet it keeps doing this. Greed, anger, and delusion, craving in its various forms. These are things here operating in the present moment. They can pull you to the past, they can pull you to the future, but they come out of the present. It's not that when you get to the present all your problems disappear. It's that you're actually getting to the place where they come from. And there's work to be done right here. When thoughts arise, they arise right here. When they disband, they disband right here. When craving gets into the act, greed, anger, and delusion get into the act, they do it right here. This is why we want to be here, so we can watch these things as they happen and catch them in the act before they create big problems. And so we're resting the mind in concentration, not because that's where we're going to end up, but it's because we need rest in order to do the work. It's like people coming to stay here at the monastery. Many times I find that they, they've got a huge sleep debt and they need a couple of days to work it off. It's the same when you come to the meditation. Many times you have a, a stress debt. So a lot of times the meditation begins simply with the quest to find that place where the mind can rest and disentangle that stress debt and let it dissolve away. So then you can get down to the work. Which is seeing where the mind fools itself into going along with mind states that are really detrimental to it, fooling itself into actually liking them. The mind does a big propaganda job on itself. The insights of the great crop propagandists and advertisers doesn't come out of thin air. It comes from watching how the mind works, how it can dress up an idea and make it look like it's something you really want to go with, or that you have to go with when you don't, when it's actually detrimental to you and it's totally unnecessary. This is what discernment is, is catching the mind in the act of doing those things, of falling for those things. At the same time, seeing the, the possibility that you don't have to fall. When your alertness and your mindfulness are quick enough, you can see this and stop the process. You keep digging in, digging in to see, well, why is it that the mind keeps doing this? 
What are its underlying assumptions? What does it think it's going to get out of these things? Why does it have faith in these things? This is what it comes down to. Faith is one of those words we don't talk about much in Buddhist circles. It's almost the F word of Buddhist circles. Many people come to the Buddhist teaching simply to get away from this, all this talk about faith. And yet you find they put their faith in all kinds of strange things. And a lot of the meditation comes down to saying, well, what really is worthy of faith? Many of our ideas that we've carried around for so long that they seem to be embedded permanently in the mind, a permanent fixture of the mind, they really aren't. The ideas we've picked up and they've just gotten repeated and repeated and repeated. The big lie. And we believe these things. That you have to think in ways that cause damage to the mind. Where you have old patterns of behavior that you just gotta just gotta keep following again and again and again, because that's who you are. The question is, why do you believe these things? If you could look at them carefully and begin to question them, and that's what the teachings on inconstancy, stress, and not self are all about. It's learning how to question these things that you really identify with. So you can see that you don't have to. You don't have to believe them. You don't have to put your faith in them. You can put more faith in your mindfulness and your alertness. Put more faith in the discernment that you can develop here in the present moment. And as you begin to see the results of the meditation, both in allowing the mind to find a sense of ease in the present moment and to begin to start prying yourself loose from these assumptions, that's when you start seeing your faith confirmed. that training the mind in this way really does relieve a lot of suffering. Your absolute confirmation doesn't come until you really see that this path leads to a deathless happiness. But you get encouragement along the way by seeing the results. It works. Your mind is in at least better shape than it was before. It may not be absolutely there at the deathless yet, but at least it's in better and better shape and you're depending on something that doesn't have to depend on a focus outside. It's right in here. And this skill that you're working on. So remember, we're here in the present moment, but the present moment keeps moving. You want to keep your mindfulness and alertness quick so they can keep moving as well as the present moves through time. And you get knowledge and experience as you move. And finally you see that oh, there is something here that's been behind the present moment that you've been ignoring all along. It's right here. That's why you have to keep looking in the present moment. But in order to develop the subtlety that you need to see it, that takes time. It takes effort. And it's learning how to balance the need for rest, the need for a sense of ease in the present moment, and the need for the effort to keep digging and being more and more observant. That's where a lot of the skill lies. So it's work to stay in the present, and it's work to dig out the the roots of why the mind causes suffering. But it's good work.
And it's the kind of work that when you do it right, instead of wearing you out, it gives you more and more strength. <laughs>